I lie down on my stomach and stare into the volcano crater. The rock is sharp, and I can feel it grating my chest as I scoot forward to peer into the glow below. Beneath the sulfuric clouds, I can just make out the bubbling lava. It's a red eye calling me forward, and I'm hypnotized. This was as far as I could get from the routine, the monotony, the predictability of everyday life. Work, gym, dinner, happy hour, repeat. Work, gym, dinner, happy hour, repeat. This, this was real. And I am on a mission to escape death by cubicle. <laughs> the journey involved two hours in a pickup filled with 19 people, a six mile hike up a dirt road from a small village, and traversing several rope bridges of death. <laughs> and it is all led by 20 year old volunteers from all over the world. Tatesel Trekkers took budget backpackers out into the wild, and all the proceeds went towards funding Nicaraguan schools for orphans. A good cause, a fun adventure, but far from a guided tour. I asked our 20-year-old tour guide if it was possible to go to the other side of the crater. Uh, I think like uh, one guy did, but maybe he fell. <laughs> it's like pretty dicey. <laughs> Days later, he would find my passport and absentmindedly stick it in a drawer, forgetting about it for weeks. <laughs> one by one, the group leaves the site to go to the tents as the sun sets, but I'm mesmerized. I want to linger. I can taste the sulfur in my mouth, but I'm powerless to look away. In fact, I want more. Finally, it's just me up there. The sky's grown dark, and I head back to camp. I descend into the jungle, and beneath the thick canopy of branches, I walk to where the camp is, and I keep moving, but... I don't see any camp. I must be a few hundred feet the wrong way. I could see the volcano high above, so I know I'm in the right spot. I turn and head for the camp. And after half an hour, I don't see anything again. I realize my mistake. I had walked too far from the mountain. Duh. <laughs> I turn around and walk faster. I just want to get to the camp. I press my body against the cold canyon wall and try to slip between the trees and the rock, but a branch rakes my arm. Another one grabs my legs. I can feel drops of blood, but I keep going because I know I'm almost there. And my mouth is dry and I can taste the fear. I hear things in the trees high above me, but I know it's okay. I will hit the camp any minute now. Except I don't. I realize it was that peak over there. I can see the slight silhouette in the distance and I stop looking for the best path and I just begin to run towards it. If I can get there, everything will be okay. And I climb higher and higher and then I'm finally on top of a huge rock. But where am I? I scamper down again. I've been so stupid. The peak was right over there. Or was it that tall thing over there? Branches are whipping by me. I balance on boulders to hurdle over small thickets of bushes. I'm bleeding. I'm just trying to get to that peak. I know it's the right one. I know this is it. This has to be it. I'm breathing hard. I can feel my tongue turn to leather. I really need to go to the bathroom. But I know once I get there, it's gonna be fine, everything will be okay, and then I can go home and back to my normal, stupid, boring life, and it will be wonderful. <laughs> and then I fall. My headlamp tumbles off my head, and I'm in the darkness. I see the pieces of it scatter in the faint moonlight sifting through the branches. And I stop, and I realize what I'm doing. Breathe. 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 It's the only thing I remember from that one meditation class. <laughs> Slowly inhale and exhale. Stop and listen and think. And I do. And I step outside myself. And I slow things down. Look, I've watched days at work fall into weeks and months. I've had the ubiquitous, I can't believe it's summer, winter, fall, spring is over conversation. <laughs> I've ticked off time in years instead of days, but at this one moment, every second becomes pregnant. I hear the slight breeze rustle the trees. I listen to the insects whirling, bats flutter by, and I take it all in and I think, what do I know? I know I'm freaking out, and I'm rewatching every story I've seen about people who have made the wrong choices and ended up with a broken leg, slowly packed to death by crows. <laughs> devoured by monkeys or hanging upside down from vines while the sun slowly turns them to mummies. I know this is not what I'm supposed to do. I know it's flight or fight time and I need to fight. They say you should stay in one place and they say you should get the higher ground and that you should calm the hell down. And I find my calm. I crawl on my hands and knees and grope for the pieces of my headlamp. 
I grab sticks. Something I don't want to remember wiggles away. But eventually I find one battery, and two, and finally a third. I'm able to track down the back of the case and the cover. I piece it together and say a small prayer to a god I don't believe in and hold my breath. Wow, it actually works. Never mind, God. <laughs> Wherever I'm at, no matter how many miles I've gone, things will be easier when the sun is up. I have water, it's warm, I just need to get visible and wait, and I need to do it now. I start towards the tallest shape, leaving little notes along the way, explaining who I am. Ayuda, help, I am Leo Deckelbaum from Washington, D.C. Send help. I tell myself calming lies. They probably already have the Nicaraguan military mobilized. <laughs> the army will sweep in to rescue me. There will be planes and helicopters. Armies of young boys on donkeys and horses will comb every inch of the wilderness. My mother will be in a platform dangling from a chopper yelling over the treetops, Leo, Leo Ducklebaum, I brought you some soup. <laughs> and then I imagine my funeral. People will console my parents, but behind them, they stage whisper. What did he think, going to a volcano? Who gets lost in a volcano? As if the world isn't dangerous enough, he had to go and be stupid. That's right, I'm gonna die a dumbass. So I resolve not to. I get to the tallest point and I scramble up slowly. It's all loose rock and scree like walking in pancake batter. I go higher and higher, crawling on my knees and hands, and finally I get to the top. I smell sulfur, I'm on the volcano, but I'm on the dangerous side. Most sane, rational people would wait at this point, but hey, I have a penis, so I think, I could just scoot across on my stomach. <laughs> I crawl across the 90 degree angle of the volcano while sulfur clouds wharf directly into my face, choking me. As I'm hanging off a ledge, inching my body over, I think, I am the Darwin Awards right now. <laughs> they will find my dead body on the crater and ask very sane, basic, rational questions like, why didn't he wait? Oh well, I guess it's a win for the world. <laughs> but I persist, because I used to rock climb three years ago and I know I can do this. With every step forward, I slide two back, like some terrible bar mitzvah dance. <laughs> but I channel my inner rock climber, find a solid foothold, Find at least one handhold, three points of contact at all times. My throat hurts, my wounds sting, I'm dizzy, and the lava doesn't seem to be seducing me as much as hungering for a sacrifice. But I persist, and after what seems like hours and hours, I finally get to where I think I started. I yell and scream, help, ayuda, help, ayuda, peligroso, fuma, rape, fire. <laughs> and then I see a figure. It's my hero coming out of the smoke. It's our guide. Call off the search, send the planes back, recall the infantry, wire the embassy. He looks at me puzzled and I continue. I couldn't find the camp. I've been lost for hours. He looks at me again. Uh, you've been lost? <laughs> yes, wasn't everyone looking for me? Everyone's in bed sleeping. I just came up to pee. And looking back in the experience, I realized that I, I learned one thing, that I'd rather die on a mountain somewhere than live a dead life. Thanks. Leo Deckelbaum, everybody.